Hello, everyone. Make sure that this is working. Uh, I've spoken to, uh, to a number of, of groups before and, and certainly different audiences throughout. And never have I looked out into an audience and seen my accountant and my parents. <laughs> so if you're looking for a, a valid, authentic story, um, we might pass that along to Ben Carson. You know you're going to get it uh, today. So I appreciate you all being here. And certainly thank you for your time uh, coming out and hearing my business story. Um, I want to share with you my journey uh, in business, what's, what's led us through to today, what got us here for our company. Uh, share with you also my, my personal journey in business uh, that, has, that has led the company to where we are today. Um, before I do that though, I'd like to take a step back and share with you, kind of give you a 10,000 foot view snapshot of, of who we are today currently. Um, this is really like a, a look at the final chapter. I'd like to tell you the story, but I'd like to show you exactly who we are. So we are America's swimming pool company. Uh, the A, the S, and the P is what that stands for. We're 75 franchise owners strong. Uh, we operate in 75 owners, operate in 20 states, operating 160 franchise territories. The gray, uh, the dark gray is where we operate currently and the blue is where we will expand in the next 12 months. This is a picture from our most recent owners meeting in Atlanta where all of our owners gather. Some stats that I wanted to share with you as they impact uh, nationally, but more importantly, as they impact what everyone's doing here, which is the betterment and, and, and the movement forward of Macon and Bibb County. A couple of stats. Uh, jobs that we currently employ nationally are 325, but again, more importantly, locally. Uh, the economic impact we'll have this year in Macon is approximately $6 million, and the economic impact next year will be approximately $7.5 million, uh, with 33 full-time jobs that we've created and, and currently employ in Macon. Uh, operating in Macon has certainly been, um, has been a choice of ours once we started franchising, and it's, uh, it's a choice which we certainly look back on and, and are glad that we did. What is it exactly that we do? Uh, we're in the swimming pool cleaning business, so we clean pools, we repair pools, and we renovate pools. We try to outperform every other business in our sector. Uh, we try to accelerate ourselves in front of the competition by doing things that everybody in this room would, would probably think to do, but that seem to not exist in the swimming pool arena. Uh, those are the simple things. And then we try to do the more complex things like developing software, proprietary software to run and operate and manage our franchise system. Uh, I, I'm also, as I mentioned, I'm very proud to be in Macon, but one thing that's interesting, a lot of people don't know where we are, where the, where the main corporate office is, because we don't really serve the public. We don't serve anyone technically in Macon. Our franchise owners come to us from afar, they visit us, they train with us, and then usually they go back to their territory. So we've got about a two-minute video that's on our website that I asked my office to pull out uh, and embed in this PowerPoint that I wanted to show you. And you know, I'm, I'm proud to be able to say today that we use the word campus. Uh, when I started franchising the business, I moved to Lake Street right off of Vineville uh, in 2007. And I rented a two, really you could say bedroom, a two bedroom office. It really wasn't much of an office. Uh, surrounded by four vacant lots over five acres. They were abandoned, uh, overgrown, and, and vandalized. And over the years we bought one parcel at a time, uh, two different buildings we purchased, and then we have, we have built our own facility as well. So if I could, I'll take about two minutes and really show you what we do on Lake Street uh, and show you the various operations.
So that is Lake Street now, um, and it's, it's a lot of the people you saw in that video were, were there um, for pool school, which is what we've aptly titled the, the two-week training period that our franchise owners go through when they come on board to us. So um, that was the hard part for me to get through the PowerPoint. My office puts it together, and I got to do this slide and then that slide. So the easy part will be for me to tell you the, uh, the story of my business and the journey of, of what got us here today and then share with you the growth uh, that we've had and, and where, we, where we see the company going. Um, so, you know, if I back up, I was born in, and raised in Macon. Obviously, my, my folks are here. I had the pleasure and benefit of going to Stratford Academy and then on to the College of Charleston. Um, looking back, I think that entrepreneurship was a bug maybe that I had in me early on. I, I, can, I can recall as early as, uh, as 12 stopping baseball and, and selling baseball cards in my parents' basement. Uh, I can, you know, by 15, I, I had a car wash business that I was going door to door with. By 18, I had a, a customer list of, of 100 strong, and we had, had two employees that worked for me, uh, complete auto detail, and sold that business actually when I moved to, uh, to Charleston. So that was my first official business ac uh, sale, equitable sale. Um, but I, I went to the College of Charleston, and you know, my journey there, I, I knew that what a great city, first off, to, to be able to live in for four years, but I knew as I was there that, uh, that I wanted to, to move on and, and start a business. Um, I didn't know what exactly, I didn't know when or, or where, but I knew that I wanted to start a business. And so my senior year, I started looking, uh, looking at various opportunities, talking to people, uh, and this is really where the journey of, of, our, of my business begins. Uh, my, my girlfriend at the time, who some of you in this room know, now my wife, Shannon, and I were driving back through Macon on the way to Charleston in, in two, late 2001. And, uh, and I stopped into a, a local uh, bank, a, a car wash customer of mine, a local businessman in town. He was the president of the bank. Uh, never told this story in Macon before, so don't worry, he's not in this room. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and he said to me, he said, hey, you, you know, my, my, my business partner and I are thinking about starting a couple different businesses. And I, and I told him, I said, I'm, you know, I'm looking for something. I'm willing to look at whatever you give me. Give me some business ideas and I'll run with it. Uh, and he said, well, we don't know anything about the swimming pool business, but you ought to look at, at the swimming pool arena. We don't know anything about it, but you take, take the information that you can. Come back to us if it's a viable and real business. And so I distinctly remember having Shannon drive back to Charleston for me. I sat in the, in the front seat and made calls and did research. And I think I, I probably by the time I got to Savannah, I knew that, that it was a business that I could make work and make him. Um, and so I spent the next three or four months coming back and forth and driving home and doing market research and put together the business plans and, and at the same time going to school. I took extra class to graduate on time to make sure I could get back in the spring and start the business. Um, told my friends and family I was moving back and it was just the biggest deal that had happened to me. And the business that you see today, who, who we are today, was actually started uh, by me being fired. So I was actually fired before I ever cleaned the first pool or made the first dollar. Those two gentlemen called me up a week before I was coming home to form the LLC with them and sign the paperwork. I was going to be their one-third partner. They were going to be the money and, and business guys. And uh, they said, Stuart, we appreciate everything you've done, appreciate all the work that you've put in, but thank you, but no thank you. Uh, we, we think you're too young, too inexperienced to run this business. This is going to be big and making, and, uh, and we're going to run with it on our own. So, you know, when I speak to business schools or to entrepreneur students, that's really the first lesson that I share with them is that, you know, one door closed can certainly be another one open. And looking back, it was the best thing that happened to me. Um, but I, I took that, and I remember like any 22-year-old you know, guy would do, I, I hung up, gut punch moment, I sat down and I called my father. And, uh, and I said, Dad, you know, here's what happened, here's the deal, here's what they did to me. Uh, I need to borrow $3,000. He said, why? I said, well, I'm going to go into competition with them. I've done all the research, I've put all the plans together, I have all the contacts, I'm going at this thing, I need to borrow three grand. And of course, Dad being a conservative pediatrician, uh, he went through all the reasons in the world why I shouldn't and don't dare do it and you're going to fail and these guys are too big for you. Uh, and I said, man, please speak to mom. <laughs> and so a few minutes later, I had the $3,000 and, uh, and, and we started the business. That was, uh, that was May of, of 2002. Um, you know, it was very simple at the time. It was me by myself. We're going to go clean pools and pick up one customer at a time. Again, Shannon, my girlfriend at the time, uh, and I racked our brains for, for a week. Uh, we had to come up with a, a business name. And to me, this is what's so interesting about business. In, in just a few short years ago, it seems, the most important thing that we came up with 
in, in the name was that it had to start with an A. Who can take a guess why? First in the phone book. We had to be A in the service sector of the Yellow Pages. For those of you under 30, the phone book is a... Um, you, you'd open it and you, and you find the names of businesses. Um, it's so interesting today in our franchise model, we no longer require a franchise owner to even be in the phone book. It's, it's completely optional. However, that was why we came up with the original name of the business, All Seasons Pool Company. That was the original A, the S, and the P of our logo. In 2002, I started with five accounts. I moved back to Macon and had five cleaning accounts that I, I, I acquired from an older gentleman who was retiring. Uh, we added one, one at a time. I brought on my first employee in 2003. Uh, 2004, we doubled revenue. 2005, we doubled revenue. So in three and a half years' time, we, we breached, the, breached the $1 million in revenue mark, which for a service company is, is a big milestone. Um, so by 2005, we were doing a million in revenue and looking for ways to expand. The traditional model would have been, okay, do we go to Atlanta, do we go to Warner Robins, to McDonough, where do we go? Um, and about that time, I had two uh, different acquaintances randomly. One was a family member in, in South Carolina, and the other was a, an acquaintance in, in Charleston. And they both called me and said the same thing at, at about the same period of time. They said, Stuart, we hate what we're doing here. You're making more money cleaning pools than we are doing X and Y. Uh, how do we do here what you're doing there? And that was really the first time that I took a couple weeks and looked into it, and that was really the first time that franchising, you know, the F word, was really brought to my attention of this could be a viable way to expand. Um, the, the best way that I can equate uh, the why, how I rationalized why that was, because I couldn't understand why franchising would be a viable business model. I knew that that was for McDonald's and Applebee's and, and Zaxby's, and I thought of big restaurant conglomerates were, were franchises. Why would anybody pay someone to teach them how to go out and, and clean swimming pools? And really, I, I continue, every new location that comes on, I continue to learn more and more about why that is. But the psychology behind it, the best analogy I can give you is, is this. You, you know, let's say that it's a lifelong goal of yours to, to go to California and you, maybe your spouse is pressuring you, maybe you want to go, maybe you want to do it on the side, whatever it is you want to do, you've got to get to California. And you find me and I say, look, I've been to California 75 times now. I know exactly how to get there. I know the fastest route. I know the best exits. I know the worst exits. I know who's got the best hotel deals and the worst ones, who to look out for, et cetera. I can provide that roadmap. And in a service sector, that's what a franchise or in the service business does. We're not providing necessarily a secret sauce like McDonald's. We're providing the secret sauce is our roadmap. And so most business owners that come to us, they just want to own a business. They don't necessarily have an innate desire and passion for swimming pools. They want a business and they want a clean, well-executable roadmap. And, and that's what we provide to them. So that's how in, initially I knew that franchising was a viable model. Uh, I studied it for six months and learned that there's thousands of different franchisors in the service business out there. Almost 10,000 different franchised brands uh, in, in, the, in the world, a lot of whom you deal with every day. And so that was where the model came from. I realized that any market that we looked at, uh, whether it was Virginia or Florida or South Carolina, it was the same fragmented mom and pop, not a lot of, um, not a lot of efficiency in the business, no real relationships. And so that's what we... Um, that's what we really played on. And the way I sell it to our franchise owners today before they leave pool school, on the last day of training, I say, my goal every day and my equation is one plus one equals three. We take our one, we take your one, and together, together we come out better than we would on our own. And so that really is the basis and the foundation that we, that we centered the, uh, the company on. Interestingly, today, if you fast forward, so 2005, we launched the franchise company. 2006, we added five locations. 2007, I made a decision in 2007 that um, was risky at the, at the time, which was I sold, I decided to, I either had to be Stuart in the Macon pool cleaning business or Stuart, the CEO that's starting a, a real franchise. And so in 2007, I decided to sell the business to um, ASP of Macon, what I originally started, to my business partner who was a, an employee of mine at the time. And so I sold uh, the, the, the local operation, you know, packed my bags and moved a mile down the road to Lake Street 
and, and really decided I was going to dedicate to those initial 10 owners that we had our, our full support and, and commitment. And so that was 2007. Uh, we grew, added 10 locations that year. We were busting at the seams. We're 20, 20 locations at that time. I made the decision then, second kind of risky decision was um, brought on a, a business partner. So I sold an equitable piece of ASP franchising to Tom Swift, who most of you in this room know. Tom was our attorney at the time, doing a lot of legal work for us. Uh, I knew he could be a trusted partner. I needed a real VP, a real right-hand man. He was looking to, to get out and get into his own business, and so our, our paths aligned in 2009. Really, I would say that's kind of the birth of the company at that point. Tom's energy, Tom's enthusiasm, our two, two heads were better than one mentality, and we really, the company was born then. 20 locations quickly turned to 40, 40 turned to 50, then last year 60 uh, turned into 70. If you fast forward as to what we look like today, interestingly, so I'm really no longer in the swimming pool business. Um, our company, ASP Franchising, really has three main areas of, of what we do. Of course, we train new owners, and, and I have trainers that, that interact with the pool business every day. But really what we are is we're a web company now. We have almost 1,000 pages on the web as we maintain, build, and operate every owner's website. We optimize it. I've got a, an employee who basically has a, a PhD in, in Google Analytics, and that's all two of my staff members do all day, every day. Web design, uh, enhancement, and analytics. Marketing. We sent out almost one million pieces of direct mail last year from Macon, Georgia. Um, that's the equivalent of uh, all day, every day, sending out two and three pieces of a campaign throughout the entire country. And we do business advisement. So from an advisor standpoint, we're helping our franchise owners go from being a small mom and pop, one or two man show, to hopefully being a million dollar in revenue producer. Our largest location does two million dollars in revenue. So a lot of what my time is spent doing is advisement. If I'm on the phone with, with our top franchise owners, we're speaking of gross profit margins and net margins and hires and fires, and we're not really speaking about the pool business. Um, so that's what we look like today uh, from an operational standpoint. Our system-wide revenue this year in 2015 will be just under 30 million. Uh, in 2016, we'll do $36 million in system-wide revenue. Uh, this is called our five-year outlook, five outlook, but this is really our four-year outlook. In, in 2020, uh, we expect to increase our company size to almost 200 franchise owners, and we'll project to do $100 million in system-wide revenue in that year. The intriguing part for us as it relates to Macon is, if you remember that number I shared with you of the economic impact that we as a company have on Macon, well that will also double and triple over that time. So we'd project to have a 15 to 18 million dollar direct impact annually on Macon uh, in 2020. And I've been asked before, how, how is that? Well, how does that translate? Well, that's because we're taking revenue and things from all of these other owners all over the country, and they're happening out of Macon. Uh, their direct mail that they do, they don't do it in Springfield, Arizona, or Orlando, Florida. We, we produce that for them out of Macon. So, you know, the direct economic impact is why we feel like we have a good partnership with, with Macon and why we feel like we're going to stay here um, and, and really give back to the community as well. I'll transition into what I see with, with Macon, what I see out of Macon, and how I think that, uh, that Macon is positioning itself. So one of my favorite words that I speak uh, at the College of Charleston about is, is, is centered around a, a presentation built on the word entreprende. And entreprende is the French verb that, that means to undertake. And it's where our word entrepreneur came from. And really, to me, that's what, interestingly, I heard last night Carly Farina uh, mentioned that's what the secret sauce in America is, is entrepreneurship, and we're missing that. Uh, big government uh, can hamper that, and we've got to see more of that. Well, when you think about that, I also think that Macon is starting to see that transformation as well. And it's, it's a testament that we have, that we have two uh, esteemed folks from Mercer here, led by Dr. Gilbert, who's our dean, uh, that's going through an entrepreneurship type revolution at Mercer. And they are performing and undertaking a task by increasing entrepreneurship and forming an innovation center, uh, which I apologize, we're going to announce that next week, but we're launching an innovation center. <laughs> Breaking news. But that's their commitment and their development to Macon, is to rip apart a building and, and give a space to students that can grow and act and form a business in their community, and hopefully then, when they graduate, they launch their business, and maybe even they stay in Macon. 
And so that's the goal at Mercer, you know, a partnership that I'm proud to, uh, to be a part of and looking forward to, to continuing and really starting that journey. Um, I, I really genuinely believe my thoughts on making, I was asked to, to give, I think our, our entrepreneurial spirit is strong, but I think it's at the very, very beginning stages. I think that if you look at downtown, the entrepreneurial spirit downtown over the past five years is just tremendous um, and, and growing by the day. Consolidation obviously was one of our most important things that, that we've accomplished certainly since I've been here and, and, and probably in the last 30 or 40 years. It's going to allow our leadership to, to undertake and to be entrepreneurs. And then of course, as I said, Mercer University and their commitment, um, putting their money where their mouth is and, and allowing entrepreneurship to take off at, at the business school. So I see great things for making. I really feel like though that we're at the very, very beginning stages of those and, uh, and I look forward to being a, a part of it for, for many years to come. That is the 10 cent version of, of the story of my business and I would uh, love to open it up to any questions. Yes, ma'am. I always know that somebody's listening when that's the first question that I get. <laughs> I tried to gloss over that part, especially when I'm telling the story and making. They never started their business. I, I thought I was moving home to compete against them. Uh, and so I kept it real quiet those last two months that I was starting the business and moved back. And of course, that was the first thing I did was try to find what's their name, where are they, what's the business location. Uh, and they never could find their, their perfect partner. Yes, sir. Are there any downturns to franchisees with respect to the economy? Or are you in the upper end of, of folks who, you know, going to use the services of those? Have you still got all the franchises you started with that you get it up? Yes, sir. 95% uh, success rates. We've had two that, that have fallen, both of which one was both of which were personal circumstances. Um, the, the question as it relates to the economy, interestingly, two answers. One, 08, 09, 010, we really were, were bearing down and watching what was, what was going to happen. Uh, we found that those customers, so from our franchisee's standpoint, those customers that were using them, they still continued to use. If somebody was paying for pool service, they still were paying for pool service during the, during the recession even the meat of it. Uh, we did see a downtick in renovation work. You know, somebody that wanted to go out and spend 20 grand on, on their backyard decreased, but maintenance and, and service increased. If your pump went out, you had to replace your pump. However, the most intriguing thing about that is that the recession was the best thing that ever happened to, to our company, to the franchising company, for sure. Because if you now look back, and, and it's easier looking back several, year, several years later, uh, our top performing franchise owners today were driven to us by the recession. So we had a SunTrust banker that was let go in Columbus. We had a, a Duracell sales rep that was forced to take early retirement. We had a top pharmaceutical sales rep in Destin, Florida. Those are three of our top five locations today. And these were not entrepreneurs, so to speak, at the time. These were just smart, hardworking, business-minded guys that said, well, I've got to find a roadmap. And we were fortunate enough to capitalize on it. And, and so the recession drove uh, 12 to 15 really high quality owners to our system that we never would have had without the recession. Yes, sir. Stuart, uh, you mentioned the business is fragmented in this group uh, What percentage of the market do you control now and what could you control? In well established markets like Macon, if you know, obviously our oldest, deepest root, rooted location would be Macon. Um, they have a customer base that has almost 70% of the pools in the customer base. Of those, they deal with about half of those people. So we, we would control about a third of the market in a well-established franchise that's seven, eight, nine, ten years old. Um, nationally though, if you look at where does our okay we're in 20 states but two or three of those states we've got one location in really so to me the most important number is how many owners do we have we've got 70 to really to 80 by this spring we feel like we could have 800 to 900 if you look at national market penetration so we've really just it's a dawning way to think of where we where we could be yes sir Stuart, what was the return on the investment of the uh, three thousand dollars never paid it back <laughs> So they got an absolutely horrible investment about it. We'll see, I'll see y'all afterwards about that. Never paid it back. Yes, ma'am. Sure. So 478 Bib Fund, um, aside from the business, I, I really, I think that entrepreneurship is, is something that can be, not only can be taught, but can be funded. So you could either teach it and send somebody down a path or you could be a natural born entrepreneur and then just need a couple thousand dollars. Uh, the 478 Bib Fund attempts to 
capture that second element. Somebody has got the entrepreneurial bug, uh, they want to start a business and they need $2,000. I've got a group of about 12 local entrepreneurs that we each put in a couple thousand dollars, put it into a fund, and we said if somebody is intelligent enough to give us a well-written application and, and send us even a remote semblance of a business plan and show us how they could create one job in Macon, we'll give them a grant of anywhere from $1,000 to $3,000 with no questions asked, no strings attached. Um, we launched that about two years ago and um, we're about to fund our 10th business next week and it's been really exciting to watch. Thank you. Thank you. So truthfully on that note, if you know anyone or have someone that could apply to it, it's, it's, you could Google it, 478 Bib Fund. And we'd love, to, we'd love to get applications because we love to read somebody's idea and making of what they could do and how they could launch a business. We get one or two a week. Yes, sir. Great. Thanks. Thank you for having me.